Hi and welcome back to my channel. I'm Rasha from Peridon Makeup. Today I'm creating an evening or fun night out makeup look um, on a model. Her name is Maddie. Now I wanted to be playful and use some colors but at the same time make it wearable in real life. Yeah, because that's my style. I want to make sure that um, whatever you do, it actually looks good in the real world, not just for a selfie. Now, when you watch this video, I'd like you to really pay attention to Maddie's features and see what you'd like to enhance, what you'd like to slightly amend and so on. For example, if you look at Maddie's eyes, you see that the outer corners slant down a little bit. So we want to give them that lift. And also whilst her, the area on her eyelids is quite large between her lashes and the eyebrows, the mobile eyelid is actually not that wide. So what we want to do is we want to increase that space to make it look like her mobile eyelid, which is a part that blinks, looks wider and is higher up. Okay, so the crease of the eye is a little bit higher. Now be mindful that Maddie does not have hooded eyes, okay? There's too many people that call themselves having hooded eyes when they in fact do not have hooded eyes. So as always, we start with prepping the skin, making sure that it's nicely moisturized and then I'm starting here with the eye primer. Now, my technique is to always apply primer and on the eyes, I apply a concealer as well because most of us have some kind of pigmentation on the eyes. So it's not just the pigmentation. I also like to start with a clean canvas, yeah? Because what happens when you don't apply um, a concealer or a foundation over the primer is that when you put the eyeshadow on, it just won't be true to its color, yeah? So when you have a look at the eyeshadow palette and you pick a color and then you put that on your eyelid, it kind of looks odd, it looks washed out. You just don't have that pigment as when you do put foundation and concealer on the eyelids. Now make sure that if you do put a concealer or a foundation on the eyelids after priming, that you firstly get rid of any excess oils and also that you set it with powder. That is really, really important. Now the type of concealer I recommend using on the eyelids because the eyelids continuously produce oil is a wax-based, a thick concealer or foundation. So avoid any moisturizing or creamy liquid um, concealers on the eyelids. Now underneath the lashes, I also apply concealer. Now, a lot of people say, oh, but if you do that, then it makes the eyes look smaller. But what's the point? I mean, why are you worried about that? Because you're going to, you know, put mascara on or you're going to put some eyeshadow underneath on anyway, and that is going to clear it out. So it's going to balance everything out for you. So like I said, make sure that you remove any excess oils from the eyelids to make sure that the natural oils of your skin don't try to have a conflict with the um, oils or the, the moisture in the concealer. So the best way to do it is to dab off any excess with a powder puff or a um, beauty blender if you like, and then apply some setting powder. You can use pressed powder or loose powder. It doesn't matter at all. Now I'm starting with the eyeshadow, starting off with a neutral base. And now I'm drawing the crease. Now, as I said before, the crease is going to be higher than where Maddie's natural crease is because we do want to open up the mobile eyelid to give it that extra depth. Now, we also want to create some dimension. So make sure you bring in the crease a little bit towards the bridge of the nose. And don't worry if it's not too neat right now because it will all be blended out in the end. Now try and keep it equal with the other eye. See, that is exactly where her eyelid creases. This is where her natural crease is. And I've gone up by a few millimeters just to show you what a difference this technique makes. Next, I'm bringing it into the lower lashes just to bind everything in together. 
Now you can use this with any color, of course, that you want. I decided to go for a halo eye look. Now with the halo eye look, the principle is basically have dark shades on the outer and inner corners of the eyes and a light, usually a shimmery shade um, in the center of the eyelid, in the middle of the eyelid. Now, a lot of uh, YouTube makeup artists and social media makeup artists I see use the whole dark eyeshadow all over the eyelid. They apply the same dark shade all over the eyelid and then they come and clean it up with concealer. Now I don't see any point in that whatsoever because at the end of the day you're going to put a creamy, you know, oil based uh, or wax based whatever concealer over the top of uh, powder and that is going to cause so much conflict it wouldn't even know where to settle. So I recommend to leave that part out blank. Yeah, so don't put any dark shade on it, just leave it out and then come in with a lighter shade if you want to create a halo or a cut crease, same way. So naturally with a cut crease you will have a little bit more cleaning up to do, that's fine. But don't put any dark colors all over the eyelids and then come clean it up with concealer. It's just a waste of time to be honest. So now I'm blending out the, the eyeshadow that I put on the crease to make it look softer and more professional. Now I use the creamy shadow uh, which has a nice shimmer on the eyelids before just where the halo is actually going to sit and I'm setting that with the same or similar shade I should say of eye shadow powder. Now I'm practically going to mirror what happens on the upper lid underneath the lower lashes. I'm going to put the darker shades on the outside but I'm not going to put any of the you know red burgundy color um, in the inner corners of the eyes because that's going to make her look really tired. When you put eyeshadow underneath the lower lashes try to bring it up as close to the lashes as possible. Here I'm mirroring the light shade, the shimmer shade underneath so basically exactly when she looks straight ahead that light gold shimmer is going to continue from the top of her lid through down to her lower lashes. Now I'm using this brush again just to make sure I've covered up the lash line as well because sometimes there is a gap left when we put eyeshadow so you want to get a thinner brush to make sure that you get into every little crease to make sure everything is neatly covered. Make sure you always check your work and make sure that it's uh, as symmetrical as possible. Now our face is obviously not symmetrical, well most of us, most of our faces aren't anyway, so as long as you can try and even them out as well as you can, that is fine. Now with Maddie, I don't want to create a winged liner with the um, halo because that's just not what I do because I find that there's just so much conflict between an eyeliner trying to um, grab attention away from the halo eyeshadow style, you know, so it's kind of conflicting. So I'd rather have just one of them be the hero. And in today's case, I chose the halo to be the hero. Now what, am I, what I am doing, however, is I am outlining the lash line just to give it that extra dimension and depth and that is going to be softened out with the dark um, red kind of uh, shade that I use for the eyeshadow just to soften it out. Now the, the purpose of the eyeliner here is to actually lift up Maddie's eyelids, yeah, to, to lift up the outer corners. That is the purpose of putting on um, this eyeliner here. Now, of course, you can also, also go with a brown shade if you want to make it softer, but I wanted to make it a bit more dramatic. So I went in with the black because it really brings out her eye color. And now I'm just going over the eyeshadow with, sorry, over the eyeliner with eyeshadow just to soften it out a little bit, just to make it less black. Now, if your eye, eye shape is not the same as Maddie's, then you won't need to do that at all if you don't want to. 
you can go ahead with just the eyeshadow or you can smoke it out even. You can use a dark or a black eyeshadow and just smoke it out rather than having a gel liner or eyeliner. Now I'm binding everything together. So I'm bringing down the eyeshadow from the outer corners that I did on the upper lid downwards. And now that I've got a more complete eye makeup look, it's basically telling me I need to smoke it out a bit more. So I went ahead and applied more, more of the dark colors underneath her lashes, her lower lashes. With mascara, try and apply mascara both from the top and the bottom of your lashes. Make sure you wiggle and pull to get the maximum benefit of that. Make sure you always use disposable applicators when you do someone else's makeup, please. Now I'm cleaning up any fallouts from the eyeshadow in preparation for the foundation. Okay. So I'm applying a primer all over the face. And I'm using my fingers here because it tells me more where the parts that I need to apply more on or the parts that I've actually missed out on and so on. So using your fingers is actually quite helpful and much more efficient in my opinion. Make sure you never pull your skin though when you apply foundation or makeup or even face creams. Now I'm starting with a color corrector for Maddie's under eyes. When you use a color corrector, stay away from anything that is really bright. So stay away from the really bright green color corrector and the really bright orange color correctors, which they assume are, you know, are going to um, neutralize pigmentation. Now, the reason being is that they leave so much pigment. It Even when you apply foundation over the top, most of the time it doesn't actually cover it completely. And you often see that on TV shows. It drives me crazy when I see, you know, a TV show and I see that the foundation looks really green because you often do see that green color corrector underneath. So instead, pick a um, concealer or sorry, color corrector that is more of a softer color, you know? It, it'll be a lot easier to cover it up. Now make sure you press it in so it looks like skin rather than makeup. That's how I like to work. I don't want to have the foundation or concealer sitting on top of the skin and make it look really cakey. That's, yeah, that's just not how I like to do makeup. So make sure you press it into the skin so it literally blends in with the skin. Okay, now the foundation is going to cover up any color corrector that I use on the face. And underneath the eyes, I'm going to use um, a concealer, which is only just literally one shade lighter than Maddie's natural skin tone. Because if you go too light, again, it'll have a conflict. Yeah, it often just looks gray and or blue, you know, so make sure you, you really marry the color corrector well with the foundation and the highlighter that you use. Or, to be honest, you can just use concealer instead. If your pigmentations aren't too bright, as in too dark, I should say, then a concealer, a good quality concealer, will absolutely do the job. So you don't have to worry about buying so many products and still wonder why they don't work. As long as a concealer is yellow based and has a yellow undertone, it will cover most pigmentations. Now I'm only applying the concealer where Maddie needs it, so I'm not going to do the triangle that you see on social media because that's not for the real world. Now, to make sure that it blends in with the skin, use your finger. The warmth of your finger will soften out the concealer and make it blend in with the skin. It wants it on top of the skin. As for the rest of the face, I'm using a powder puff to press the foundation into the skin. Now that I've put the foundation on, I can have another look at the eye makeup and see what it needs. So in here, it asked me to blend it out a bit more, so I abide by its wish. So I just go ahead and blend it out and make, take it out towards, towards the temples. And I'm applying now setting powder all over the, uh, the rest of the face. And of course, underneath the lower lashes. Now, please be mindful that the skin underneath our eyes is a very different texture to the skin on our eyelids. Our eyelids are oily 
Whereas the skin underneath our eyes tends to be really dry. And this is why we get so many creases and expression lines in there. So please avoid applying a lot of powder underneath because that is going to guarantee you that it is going to look cakey and cracked. So the less powder you apply on there, the better. Moving on to contouring. Now Maddie's shape is oval. So she has an oval face shape. So what I want to do is I want to basically cut off that ovalness <laughs> and uh, give it a little bit more um, width. So this is I'm achieving that by bringing in the um, contour from the cheekbones closer towards her nose rather than down to her lips. If you do the contour as a diagonal line from the ears all the way down to your lips, you are going to elongate your face. Whereas if you bring it closer inwards towards the nose, you are going to give yourself this width. Now, highlighter is applied just over the top of the cheekbones. And I'm applying some over the cupid bone. And because Maddie does have a really small nose, I went ahead this time and actually highlighted the bridge of her nose, which is a step I hardly ever do on my clients because it really does contradict with the contour. So there's no point in contouring your nose and then going ahead and bringing attention to your nose if you want to make it look slimmer anyway, you know. So highlighter, anything bright colored is going to widen an area. Applying the false eyelashes. Maddie's eyebrows don't really need much done to them at all. I'm just going to tidy up the gaps and try and draw them so that they're more symmetrical. And now moving on to the lips. With uh, Maddie's lips, I wanted to create something very similar to what I did on her eyes. So I am using a ombre style lips. So I'm applying the lighter shades in the center of their lips and then a darker shade on the outside. That gives it fullness as well. This here is the final look. I hope you um, could see what we did, what we amended, what we emphasized on and what we slightly altered uh, with Maddie's features. And this is what makeup is really all about, to further beautify your features. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Leave me any comments down below, any questions you have, any suggestions for future videos, and I'll be happy to do them for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.